Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the Plugin Alliance Brainworks Black Box HG2 MS. It's an update on the already venerable Black Box Saturation Unit. Um, this update really, to me, brings it to a whole different level of processor. Um, it's not a minor update, it really transforms it into something that um, I used to use on certain things and now I'm going to find myself using a lot more. Um, so we're going to be looking at the new features and then I'm going to be demonstrating um, what it can do on a stereo mix in a mastering context. The settings that I use on this particular track won't necessarily translate on another track so you really need to um, work with this unit or any saturation unit uh, to really understand how to manipulate it for different tracks. So it's not like you can sort of copy and paste what I'm doing here onto another track and expect to get the same effect. Um, and as I said, I, I probably wouldn't use this kind of effect on most mastering, but sometimes it's just what the master needs. Um, but I thought it was a really good way to demonstrate what the new features can do. So I hope you find this useful. And before we get into it, it would be really helpful to me if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. That would be really appreciated. Thanks, and let's get into it. So here we have the Black Box um, HG2 MS. So this is a significant update, um, and I'm going to show you the basics of it, and then I'm going to show you some tricks, some mastering tricks that it's really good for. So let's just have a look at the original just to compare the two. So here's the original black box. Um, it's a great sounding unit that, that I use, but I always did find it a bit limited in what it could do and what I could use it for. Um, I never found it super useful for mastering uh, and tended to use it more on individual in instruments or sometimes on, on subgroups and things. And it has some basic controls, it's based on a hardware unit, but this one is a significant upgrade and now, for me, it's suddenly become really useful for mastering purposes. Um, and for even more useful on, on drum buses and subgroups and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be looking at today. There are so many things you can do with saturation that I could never cover it all in in one video, so I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to show you one uh, thing that that's, this is really useful for uh, in a mastering context. So let's just look at the differences between the original and, and the new one. Basically, it's got, it's got the same pentode and triode tubes, which are in series. So the pentode, they both have a different sound to them, but the pentode drives the triode. So depending on how you have the pentode set, how much drive you've got on that, it changes the sound of the triad. So this makes it tricky to work with because each of these changes the volume a lot. So you've got to be really careful about volume matching and you've got to work a lot with, with that so that you're not being fooled by volume changes. Especially when you're working with saturation, which is a subtle effect a lot of the time. Um, you've got to be so careful that even just one dB louder um, isn't fooling your ears. It's tricky. You've just got to try a being a lot and make sure that it's not fooling your ears. Um, especially when you're talking about subtle changes, which we are here. So we've got the pentode and triode um, and then we've got um, an extra saturation circuit um, that I believe drives into these two. I'm not sure. I think it does. Um, these two certainly don't affect the saturation circuit. I can demonstrate that, but I think the saturation circuit drives into these two. Um, so that's an added saturation which you can affect on the original just in a, just the lows, flats, highs. So I guess it has a built-in filter here. But that's enough about this one because basically you've got all of this in the new one plus a lot more. It's a lot of big changes. So these areas here, the air is like an extra amount of sort of high end that gets added in. I think it's a bit more than just a high end filter. I think it does something with the tubes to bring out the high end. It doesn't sound like just kind of a high shelf to my ears. Um, but the changes 
are two places. One, they're in the saturation circuit, and two, they've added a whole uh, Brainworks section in here, um, which is super useful. Um, so saturation, basically the saturation circuit in the old and new version have two types of tube configuration, which give you different sounds. The alt tube is a little bit harder, I guess you'd say, more aggressive. To my ears, it, it isn't necessarily, it just has a different tonal aspect to it. Um, but now, rather than just having this kind of three position filter, you can actually decide to just saturate the lows at whatever point you want um, without affecting anything above that cutoff. Just saturate things below, say, 300 hertz or wherever you want. And you've got a dB per octave thing, which is basically how steep the slope is. So like a really steep slope at 30 dB per octave or like a really shallow slope down at six and in between. Um, and then you've got the opposite of that, which is a high pass, um, which is exactly the same thing. You could just think, well, I'm just going to want to saturate the highs and not have touch anything below that or at whatever point. And you've got a bend pass, which is just a certain area of the frequency spectrum you want to affect in the middle somewhere. Um, you've got flat, just like the old one, saturates everything or ch just a, a bend cut. So it saturates everything except for where you choose the band and with both the band pass and band cut you've got a Q which is the width of the amount of the of the, of the area you're working with. So that's a huge difference. Um, it really gives you a lot more control in a way that to me is just like it turns this into a completely different effect really. It's so much more useful now for mastering and anything really with this. Um, where I know right away that this is now something I'm going to be using a lot more. Um, so you can also solo it here, which is really useful to hear exactly what you're honing in on. So now the other big change is down in this section here because it allows you to do MS, which to me in a mastering context suddenly opens this up into something really spectacular instead of just like another flavor of saturation it actually opens it up a lot so once you're in ms this becomes the mid and this becomes the side so you can saturate your mid differently for example you could saturate the low end of your mid and the high end of your sides which would be a kind of something i might do or you might just bring out some of the mids mid range the mid frequencies in the mid channel and um, without necessarily doing it in the sides to make you know uh, something in the mids like a vocal or, or a lead instrument have more density or saturation without affecting the whole thing. Uh, really useful. Um, parameter link here allows you to do them separately, which we'll see in a minute. It's got the Brainworks TMT, which is really useful. It basically turns it into a different unit each time you click this. So, you know, the tolerance in real hardware means that no two units are the same because every component in it has a tolerance and each component in every unit is going to be a little different. You know, every every valve, tube, every um, resistor and capacitor are all going to be a little bit different in each unit. And what this does is it, it gives you a preset randomization within the manufacturing tolerances of every component. So you basically, every time you click this, you get a different unit off, off the production line, which is really good because it means that you can click through these and find subtle differences and think, well, actually, I really like the low end of this one. Um, and I really like, you know, what this one does to the high end and so forth. And remember those. And um, basically, you can link the two here so that they're always the same, or you can have them each, each one be different on each side. Um, and then over here, we've got what the old one had, density, which basically drives the whole unit. It's like driving the input while turning the output down at the same time. Then you've got calibration, which just very subtly changes the high end. Um, Monomaker, which is a BX standard, um, which just monos out the low end as you turn it up more and more into the mids and so forth. Um, stereo width control standard BX stereo width it's got a parallel really useful um, 
and it's got an output control which is useful because you can set the output control separately for left and right or M and S, but this controls the output for the whole thing without you having to mess with these if you've set them up a certain way. So that's super useful. So as I said before, when you're messing with anything to do with saturation, you've got to be hyper careful about always adjusting your output as you A, B to see whether you've made an improvement so that you're not just getting half a dB louder and thinking, oh, I think that's a little bit better, but actually it's just a little bit louder. So I'm not going to be doing that really carefully in this demonstration because um, just because of time and also because um, I'm going to exaggerate things here a bit because it's YouTube and the audio quality is not, you know, 24 bit wave audio quality and a lot of these effects are quite subtle. Uh, so I'm going to be overdoing things a little bit um, just so you can kind of hear what this can do. Right, so let's start with um, listening to a bit of a track here on a loop and then I'm going to start making some changes. Okay, so you can hear what that sounds like. I'm now gonna be thinking about from a mastering context, I like a little bit more 3D, a little bit more depth from front to back. I'd like a little bit more width. I'd like a little bit more detail. So that's what I'm gonna be working towards um, with this. So what I'm gonna do is saturate the mid channel at the low end to give it a little bit more density down in the low end and a little bit more weight and punch on, on the low, on the kick drum in the low end. And then I'm gonna add some high end saturation to the sides to um, give it a bit more width. And I find that when you do that, you can often get a little bit more front to back depth as well by having different saturations on the low end and the high end. Um, plus the saturation you're gonna get on everything from the pentode and triode. But I think of this saturation the way I would use it anyway, and I'm sure you could use it in lots of ways that would be different from this, but the way I would use it would be to add density, thickness, glue on the low end and the mids, and on the top end I'd use it to add sheen and, and, and silkiness. Whereas the pentode and triode, which is the kind of main stages of this and they sound different if I turn them up very different than what the saturation tube does. They're all tubes but to me these can be far more kind of aggressive when you really turn them up um, but at a lower level they can add quite a lot of subtlety. So they're almost to my ears a, a bigger move um, in, a, in terms of what they can do. The, the difference between what they can do, but that's just my the way I explain it. I mean, you just got to listen to these. You might describe all of this differently. It's just knowing what they sound like and knowing the difference that you can make with them. So it is tricky because this one, the Pento drives the triode. So you can't just turn it up and down and say, oh, that's what the Pento does, because as you turn it up, it's changing what the triode sound does. So depending on how you have this set, it's going to change how this sounds and vice versa. So they're completely kind of interactive in that way. So you just have to learn the flavors of what happens. And if you turn this up, you know, the volume goes up. So you've got to turn the volume down right away to compensate. Um, and you can say, well, I'll turn this down and it turns the volume down, but it also changes the sound too as you change either of these. So it's very interactive. And you just have to kind of learn what they do. Um, I just think of them as flavors and I, I will turn one or the other up depending on the flavor I want to get and probably turn the other one down to compensate because I'm going to get too much distortion. And with all of these distortion effects when you're dealing with um, saturation, when you're dealing with subtler effects for mastering rather, um, then you're talking about a real, what I think of as a threshold of distortion where small amounts of it really enhance and, and add, but you cross this threshold where suddenly you start losing more than you're gaining. And 
you know, adding a little bit of distortion and saturation in just the right way can really open out this front to back 3D of a mix. And it can really bring out detail and it can add solidity and all of those kind of things. But you add just a little bit too much and suddenly the soundstage collapses. Like literally, you turn it up a notch or two and your soundstage just collapses down and you get more of a 2D effect and, and all your clarity disappears. One or the other or both of those things happen and your solidity suddenly becomes messy. So it's a really fine balance with saturation and you've really got to kind of listen out what, what are you doing. And that, that's why if I turned up one of these more, maybe not a notch, but two or three notches, I'd probably end up turning the other one down. Not just because of the volume difference, but which I can do here, but because I'll probably start to lose what I've gained if I don't, if that makes any sense. Hopefully it does. So let's have a go now at doing that. I'm, what I, I mentioned, which is solidity to the low end and sheen and width on the, on the high end and a bit more 3D front to back. So I am going to uh, move this to uh, a low pass um, and I want a pretty steep filter, I think. I'm going to pull it down here um, somewhere around about here, I think. And then I don't want too much saturation. I'll, I'll adjust that once they start playing it. Um, and then I th think I'm going to try adding some pentode here and pull back a bit here. So I get that flavor in the mid, in, in the low end and the, and, and the mid, because I'm, I'm mid side here. So this is going to be adding, the, here I'm adding it just to the low end, but here it's going to be on everything. So this is why I'm going to end up getting more of a 3D thing, because it's the whole spectrum this is going to be covering. So I'm driving a bit more pentode type harmonics here and pulling back on the triode here so I don't get um, too much distortion. And then now on the sides, uh, I'm going to put this in. Um, so I've undone parameter links so they're not linked. Um, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to go to um, high pass here. Again, I want it quite steep. And I'm going to um, high pass somewhere around here. So kind of like some of the mids, upper mids and up into the highs. I'll adjust the saturation once we start playing it. Again, I think I'm going to prefer the alt tube here. No, actually, I'll wait and listen. Um, and here I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cut back a bit on the pentobe and drive it more on the triode. And that difference on the sides is going to help to create a 3D effect. All right, so let's have a listen to this and I'm going to adjust the saturation a bit as I do that. For the in and out, I'm going to do it here just because it sounds a bit smoother rather than using the main bypass. So now I'm just going to solo this mid-band to fine-tune where I want that to be, how I want that to sound. And now I'm going to A, B this a uh, little bit, and then I'm going to start working on the details here of how much saturation.
So hopefully you can hear on YouTube and you'll need, I really recommend you, you listen on speakers because with headphones you're not going to get the 3D thing. Uh, so you need to use speakers to hear the 3D depth expand. Um, that just doesn't happen on headphones. Um, but on headphones you'll hear the width change obviously. Um, so hopefully you can hear that the front to back deepens significantly when I put it in. Uh, more detail coming up from the low level information. Um, details on the snare and cymbals and things. It's There's more width. The top end is is enhanced and smooth and the low end is a little bit more solid so it, it's quite a, a change and a, and a root to me to my ears for this piece of music a really a really positive change so now that's it's quite a big change I've made there and I probably wouldn't go that far in an actual mastering situation um, but you can hear that you know I'm so I'm overdoing it just so you can hear obviously what it's doing but you can hear that that could be a really useful uh, thing in mastering so I'll mess around a bit more now with some other variations um, along the same lines so let's try uh, see if I can get a bit more clarity in the low end So yeah, if you listen to the low end, the kick drum and, and the bass, you can hear a bit more clarity. Um, they're a little bit tighter sound and a bit more clear. You can hear the bass a little bit more clearly, but it's still got that kind of expanded front to back depth and, and it's still got the expanded width and, and the top end is enhanced in the same way. I didn't, I didn't change that or well, not much, a little bit. And the reason I did change that a little bit, I moved it up a little bit here so that it was affecting less of the mids just because those kind of things change everything. Any change you make changes everything. So you change something to the high end, it changes the low end and vice versa. It's just the way our hearing works. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't actually change anything in the low end, but it changes the way it sounds to us. Um, so it's important to, to kind of keep that in mind. So let's think, what else can I do here? Um, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to reverse things. I'm going to create a different effect. I'm going to reverse what I'm doing with the triad and the pentode um, and see if I can create the same effect but in a different way. Again, just to remind you, I'm overdoing everything here to make it easy and obvious to hear uh, on YouTube because honestly, um, these effects are if done in the way I actually would do it during master, mastering, I'd do them in a more subtle way and it may not come across on YouTube and it's all about showing you what this unit can do. So, uh, um, as well as the kind of techniques I'm showing you, but also to keep in mind with the techniques and, you know, it would be different on every piece of music. Um, these settings would not translate well to a different track. Um, even on the same album, you've really got to adjust it and know what you're trying to get to. And 
on a lot of types of music, you wouldn't even want to do this type of thing. Um, on a, you know, on, on acoustic jazz, for example, these kind of widening and deepening effects, especially on something like a trio or even a quartet, you know, it probably wouldn't want, be what you'd even be trying to do. So it's just really worth keeping in mind that mastering is, is, is not a kind of, you know, a one, a one setting fits all at all. It's really, really different on every track. And this is not something I would apply to most pieces of music. Um, but for some things, it's really great. Um, and it's the same with every other mastering thing you do. It's, it's very specific to each piece of music. So anyway, um, I'm going to see what I can get by reversing what I did, basically, which is boosting the pentode on the the sides now instead of the mid, and we'll see see what that sounds like. I'm going to add a bit of air. So I'm going to just play this and then start adjusting things a bit. So really different effect, um, even though I'm basically doing the same thing, I've reversed these and I've added a bit of air. I'll take the air in and out as well, just so you can hear what that's like. Yeah, so quite a different effect, not just the air, but even without that, it's quite a different effect than having these pentodes reverse so that, and tried reverse so that I'm, I'm driving one in the mid and, and the one in the side. Very different effect. This, to me, it's, it's a softer, gentler appro effect. Um, and the other way around, driving the pentode in the mid and, and the triad in the sides gave it a, a, a slightly less um, gentle sound, but it also had a little bit more focus in a way. Um, so subtle differences, and depending on the piece of music, you might want one or the other. Um, so yeah, just I hope this was useful just to show the, some of the things you can do with this amazing plugin in its new form. It's so much more versatile and so much you can do with it now. Uh, and this is just on a stereo mix. On single instruments, of course, it's just as versatile in different ways. You wouldn't necessarily have the MS thing that you'd be doing if it was on a solo instrument, but 
it's got all of the potential for shaping the sound. Um, so just one final thing on this is that this is, this is basically an EQ as well as saturating, it EQs. So you're not just saturating, you're EQing at the same time because as I boost the saturation in the lows here, um, I'm bringing the lows up, I'm EQing the lows. So the lows will come up as I bring this up and it's the same with the highs. Um, so in a sense, by boosting the lows and the highs, I'm bringing, dipping the mids a little bit. So it's, it's not the same as an EQ, but it is affecting the frequency response significantly. And it is in a way, it is not in a way, it is EQing as well as saturating. So it's just really worth keeping that in mind. Um, and you can really hear that when I bring it in and out, that the tonal balance of the track is changing. So it's just really worth keeping that in mind that you're doing both things at the same time. Um, I've yet to see a saturation plugin that allows you to boost saturation in a certain frequency area, but at the same time kind of compensates for it and pulls back on that EQ wise so that you kind of keep the same level. I mean, maybe it's not really possible to do that uh, in a way that's effective as you change the saturation. So that's why it hasn't been done. I don't know, but if anybody knows a saturation plugin that does that, it'd be interesting to have a look at. Um, and I hope this was useful. Um, if it was, please do subscribe and give the video a like and hope to see you next time.